Hey, what's your argument? Hey, uh, so back to slavery. So in... No, 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 we're not doing this shit. What is your argument that justifies God's existence? My argument that God exists? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's that... Well, honestly, I just, I, I really wanted to talk about the slavery thing. Do you think slavery is bad? Yeah, I think slavery is bad. Wait, are you Christian? Yeah. Why do you follow a God who allows and orders us to enslave people? So did he actually order us to enslave people? Yes, I guess 21, seven, he says you can sell your daughters as sex as slaves. Uh, do you think that's good or bad? Sex? Like it says do sex? Think it's, do you think it's good or bad to sell your daughter as a slave? Is that good or bad? Obviously that's bad. Okay, so then why does God instruct us to do that? Is that a good law or a bad law? All right, well, let's review Let's review it. Oh my God, here we go again. Was it good or bad when God instructs us to sell our daughters as slaves? Was that a good or bad law? Okay, so you're, that's a two-part question, right? So oh you're my saying, gosh. well, hold on. <laughs> well, that's a two-part question. You're saying, was first off, you're saying God said this, was that good or bad? So my question is, did God actually say that? And yes, it is yes. bad. If he did say Bible, that, then it is. Do you think the Bible is God's word? Well, what does it actually say? It says you can sell your daughter as a slave in Exodus 21, 7. Was that good or bad? Oh, he has to read it. Come back when you read it, okay? <laughs> hey Mike, how you doing, Mike? Do you have an argument? Yeah, explain to me how all these cows and sheep on my farm exist. If there ain't no God. Hello? Hello? Hey, what's your argument? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so my argument's gonna be in a form of a syllogism. Okay. Are you ready, Mike? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Yeah, usually when I ask a question, I want a response, but oh yeah, P P1 is just basically gonna be, if P1 is a big conjunctive contingent fact of a world W1 and a P2, it's going to be the P1 of a conjunctive contingent fact of a W2. Then if P1 and P2 are identical, then W1 would equal W2. This is going to be tautological. P2 would basically be, if P is the actual world's big conjunctive contingent fact, was, it's going to be true by hypothesis. Then P3 would be, for any proposition, P and any world, W. If P and W is big conjunctive contingent fact, then there is going to be some possible world where P1... And W1 oh is going to be gosh. some proposition. I want to hear a PSR. I want an, a good argument for God. Okay, sure. Do you think it's going to be possibly... Uh, is, do you think it's going to be possible that a necessary being exists? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so if it's going to be possible that a necessary being exists, right, then it's going to have to exist in all possible worlds since that being is necessary. Therefore, God exists. Well, well, no, God is ill-defined, number one. Number two, we can that can work for anything. I can say nature is necessary, and therefore, via PSR, nature is necessary. There's no God. Uh -huh, I win. Anybody can do that. <laughs> All right, let me... Yeah, okay, sure. So, like, my definition of God is just basically going to be, like, a necessary being. So, it's just not going to be ill-defined. And second of all, um, you can't really use that for nature. If you're trying to argue that something is going to be, like, necessarily the case... Then it has like it has to exist in all possible worlds, yes, and if it exists in all exists possible, in all possible worlds, worlds, there you go. Nature is yeah, okay. no god. Sure. I win. So how is like you using it in nature, or how is you using nature as an example going to be like, you know, like a refutation to what I said? Again, following your your logic, we can just say this for like the universe itself. The universe is po it's possibly necessary, therefore it's necessary. I win. There's no god. 
Anybody God, can yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> this is not going to be the case, right? Because there's still going to be a possibility of God existing. So if it's going to be possible, so everything, it necessary. everything is necessary. You get, I don't know how does this argument locate, how does this argument point point God being the only okay. necessary? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Let me like, just break it down for you. Right. So if it's going to be this, possible, this is a staged argument. Just get to your next well, argument that get, gets to God. It's a stage argument. Hold on, Mike, I'm going to need you to pipe down. I don't know why you're being so defensive. Right. So. If it's going to be possible that I in this. Yeah, I'm not dealing with children here anymore. <laughs> I need you to, need you to pipe down. Hey, how you doing? So I'm just wondering, do you necessarily think that believing in God is wrong? Or what's your point of view? I, I think God's imaginary. Do you have an evidence or argument for God? Well, I don't necessarily have evidence. But my whole point is, what I'm trying to say is, do you think that it's bad believing, like taking the word from the Bible and applying those values to yourself? The Bible, I think the Bible is very terroristic, very violent, and very, very wrong. Yes. Do you think it's wrong? For, the thousands, of, world. Yeah. for, for thousands of years, though, people have st stick to the values that the the bible tells like you know what i'm trying that's to say that's why we have a fucked up world where people are very hateful and bigoted but i don't necessarily think there's a lot of bad stuff in the bible i think people just inter no, I, well, i think there is do you have an argument for god now so i can like move on or no okay have a good day Thank you, bro. Oh my god. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. This nigga is ass. So look, if you agree that it's possibly necessary for a God existing, therefore God exists within all possible worlds. You're... I don't agree with that. I don't you think God's you, yes, possible. You... <laughs> I don't think God's possible. <laughs> what you say? You don't agree with him? What's, you... What do you mean by God? You said what? What is God? Um, Let me look at the definition for you real quick so we can get to understand it. Let me know if you disagree or not. You can't just say God's possible, therefore it's necessary. I can say this with anything. I'm saying possibly life. necessary. Okay, I can say it for nature. Nature is possibly yeah, necessary. Yeah, what's going to be the argument for th that? Th though. Therefore, That's God the... doesn't exist. Yeah, it's going to be if the nature... difference. If nature is possibly necessary, then we can just say nature is necessary. There's no God. This is your argument. This is how bad it is. Yeah, listen, right? The distinction between my argument and your argument, I'm waiting for an argument for yours. But in the case, you can't just utilize, utilize my argument and say that your argument will go through. It's a distinction between us. I, I literally cloned your argument and I showed so what's you going to be the basis this. for it. What's going to be the basis for it? <laughs> the burden of proof is on you, dumbass. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was, I used your argument. I uh -huh. still need your argument uh -huh. and I showed you why it doesn't lead to God. Yeah, I, bro, yeah, listen, I already, I already sufficed my argument being the case. Okay, what's your evidence for God existing? Yeah, bro, listen, I already, bro, listen, right? What's I gave you, listen, hold on, can I speak real quick, old man? Damn. So look, right, God exists. Don't get me off. <laughs> Don't get me off. <laughs> Hurry up! Just oh, get yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, what yeah, is your argument right. that God exists? Yeah, I already proved. Yeah, I already proved God exists because we. Oh, damn, I'm stuttering. I already proved God exists, but you forgot because you have dementia. Yeah, these people are not serious. Hey, we got. Oh, okay. So, um, you said you're atheist, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. When's the last time um, something came from nothing? I don't know. Can you what create that even something means. from nothing? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't think anything came from nothing. You're atheist, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So, how did we get here? We just showed we, up or what? We didn't get here. We didn't get here from kind of we some just kind arrived, of we just evolved. Okay, and... can you stop? Can you stop and let me answer? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, of course. I know you want to ask me, where do we come from? Where are we here from? Oh, well, that's not hold, no. Hold, See, hold now on, you're not... hold on. Hold on. You're forgetting another alternative that we existed forever. It could be the case that we always were. And if we began, there could be a previous universe where we come from. None of this implies God must exist. So can you get to the God argument now? 
Thank you. You're muted. You have to unmute yourself. You look at a building and you know that an architect worked to design that building, correct? Mm hmm. OK. So you can look around and see, I don't know, just everything around us. And you don't think that it's not designed perfectly. The biomes, things like that. When you, when you look uh, at a how they're synced in, where you can hold on. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, was, look, I was just trying yeah, to get to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when you look at a building, you know there's a builder and an architect. Right. But when I look Correct. at the rain, but when I look at the rain coming down, I don't think there's a rainmaker in the clouds, right? Is I don't think there's uh, a leprechaun. I don't think there's a leprechaun in the clouds with a ho rain hose. Clouds just appeared water. or what? Shut up, dude. Listen to me. That's why you still believe in fairy tales and, as an adult. You look at a building, you know there's a builder. But this doesn't apply to things in nature, like clouds, volcanoes, and earthquakes. There's nobody in volcanoes pushing up the magma to make a volcano spurt. It doesn't happen, right? There's something called natural processes, which applies to, to, to rain, to thunder, to all these things I mentioned. So you can't use this argument for everything. So it's possible that the universe was caused naturally or was always there. Okay, does that make sense, True? Please unmute. We can't hear you still. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but how did we cause it? Like, how, like what caused it? It didn't just happen. There has to be a force behind it. Well, how did God happen? He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the oh, end. Oh, so God was always there. So why can't we say the right. universe always was there? Well, uh, if you go to the Bible, it tells you. But you don't, you don't, you don't, we'll take that if out of it, right? If you go to the Quran, it tells you that Allah made it. If you go to the, the, the Vesta, it tells you that the Zoroastrian God did it. If you go to the, the Mayan book, the Mayan God did, you, did it. This correct. applies to every book you read. I, I don't want books. I want evidence. Right. And I, I'm giving you evidence, but you're denying it. Because it's not evidence. Because you, can, Do you, know what evidence you can't is? prove anything. You know that, right? Yes, you can prove things. How? Prove to me that we're talking. Having I didn't this conversation. Say I can prove everything. I said I can prove things, including analytical claims like definitional statements, like squares have four sides. That's a proof. That squares have four sides. No, that's now, evidence. When it, when it comes to us that's talking, evidence. there's lots of evidence of us talking. And there's a difference between evidence and proof. Evidence is indicative. Proof is conclusive. Um, so yeah, again, okay. what's your evidence for God now? We're still waiting. There's a lot, man. I mean, like I told you, like, but you, you don't want to accept it, and that's fine. Um, no. Because I don't think we, I mean, I don't, we don't just exist. We've just existed forever. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why the biomes are so... Go no, ahead. Just because things don't make sense to you doesn't make them false. Right. right. And it should be saying as the world you, right? That don't make sense. There's a lot of things that don't make sense. Like, time slows down as you move faster through space. That doesn't make sense. God is outside fact. of time and space. Look, Do you not I understand like that? You can make claim after claim after claim and pretend you're getting somewhere, but you're not. You have some. I'm not getting you. anywhere. I'm just worried for you, sir, and your salvation. Oh, you're going to preach to me now? No, okay. absolutely not. Look, absolutely I not. You, I, look, did I, I sound you, like I, I was? I I, I'm sorry I offended you. I understand you're coming from a nice place where you want to be, you care about my salvation, whatever the fuck that means. But the problem is you're making baseless claims. Anybody can stay, say, oh, I want to help you out. I want to turn you to turn you to Allah. I want to turn you to Buddha. I want to turn you to Bida. I want to turn you to Babudaba. Anybody can say these things. I want good reasons. Evidence isn't just, oh, look, designer, designer. Evidence is something we can verify, we can falsify, we can independently verify. It, it goes beyond the Bible. It goes beyond the Bible, right? It goes beyond the claim. It does something that enables us to falsify. That's evidence, right? Um, that's what I'm looking for. If you don't have that, I'm not going to just 
believe your claims, okay? So do you have, I'll give you one more chance to maybe give me some good, good uh, arguments. You have to unmute again. I have no clue what's going on. You're not muting me, are you? I hope not. I am muting uh, you, sir. Can you please answer now? You are or aren't? I am. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Have a good day. <laughs> Look, guys, I'm not trying to be a bad person here. I'm not trying to be the mean person. But look, you know, sometimes you need some evidence. At some time, you got to bring up something, you know, something substantive. Substantive. Hello? Hello? Hi. Do you have an argument for God? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to use proof from the Bible. Um, so the Bible states that um, Earth is flat, and I could prove that Earth is flat, so... If I prove Earth is flat, then I can prove that God's real. Okay, that 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 can't be a real person. If that's a real person, I feel sad for society. Hello. Uh, hello. How old are you? Thirty-nine. <laughs> okay, just asking for TikTok. Um, yeah, what's your argument for God? Um, I guess I'm not here for an argument. My husband's having me do this. He likes live TikTok. I don't really do TikTok that often. I have a question though. It's very, it's a very inflammatory kind of posting. I mean, the you're gonna get people who like come on and argue that the Earth is flat, and you're gonna get people who just come on to argue, probably without any real like theological responses on it. But you're gonna get the views and the clicks. Is it you? Do you really want somebody to convince you of God's reality? I want some good arguments. Yeah, sure. Do you have any? Are you searching for? I don't. Are you searching for something? I'm always searching for answers, ma'am, and that's how the world works. I want to learn, right? And if people there's have a genuine God, like openness, yes, like if, if someone if came people, with you, yes, like if came people with have a, for God, look, I'm the most open. Look, I'm the most open, open-minded person there is. I, I am wrong a lot of times, and I change. I've changed from a Christian to an atheist. I've changed from a non-vegan to a vegan. My life has seen many changes where I said, "Oh wait a minute, I'm wrong here. Let me change." I like learning. It makes the world a better place for me and for everybody. That's why I do these things. And yes, it's going to become inflammatory. There's no nice way to say you have no evidence of God. It just there's no way I can sit there and be, you know, sugar-coated, sugar-coating all this stuff. Oh, there is no God, buddy. You know, there is no ultimate purpose to somebody who believes in God. That's a very hard thing to do. It just takes time. It just takes time to, to learn and change. God died on the cross for our sins. He didn't have to. He did it for no reason. Hello? You know, you know, you say God died for our sins, but why didn't just why didn't God just, you know, walk the dog for our sins or make some toast for our sins? God didn't have to die like a maniac. He could have just came down and helped us directly. He didn't have to do all this drama queen stuff, uh, pretend to die for two days, come back up flood the planet, that's not necessary. I mean, he could have helped us directly. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's your argument? So I just wanted to know why, like, what is your view on like the Bible? It's mythology. It's mythology, like you don't believe that it's historically correct? No. Okay, did you know that there's 63,779 cross-references in the Bible? Over 40 different authors in three different languages, and they all agree and cross-reference themselves. 
And the well, Bible itself guessed, has been used. The, the, the authors of the book would reference themselves from the book. Oh, no shit. Look, I'm asking for evidence beyond the book. Oh, these are 40 they're, different they're, authors among... I don't care if there's a billion different authors. Years. It doesn't make the, they, the, the book any more true. And there's been like buildings and... or. What's it yeah, buildings, structures, look, and look, ho Juanita, things that they haven't known about that. Hold on. Juanita, hold on for a second. Back I understand you're eager to come up here and say, Mike, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Unfortunately, there are a lot of claims in the Bible, like people walking on water, right? People resurrecting from the dead like a zombie. People, people as in people, Jesus people, Christ, who is God. People talking to snakes and talking to donkeys and, you know, people living for 900 years. There's a lot of issues I see in the Bible that no amount of historical data was ever going to demonstrate are true. That's the problem here. I want evidence that the miraculous stories are real, that there's a God. I don't care about the history. So if you're not going to take the Bible itself into consideration among the things like even such as like the Gospels, or the none of which are like, I yeah, would say, the apostles the that, are hold on hold the on. gospels the are not I would say testimonies at all. The apostles that have seen Jesus come back to life. There's no Oops. evidence that somebody saw Jesus come back to life. That's just he a appeared story. among five hundred people. That's a story. He's that's, apostles, that's part bro, of the, that's part okay, of the story. Yeah, three no, there's real evidence that these apostles live. Where, where's life. your evidence? Where's your evidence beyond the story? Right? Because remember, the story is the claim. I'm looking for evidence. Okay, I can't provide you the evidence right now at this very moment, but I'm telling you, if yeah, you do that's, the research, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking for. What we, need to do. That's what you want, we want next time, right? Evidence. You know, some good reason to believe. <clears throat> Keep tapping and keep commenting for the algorithm. Thank you. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Unfortunately. Oh, that's uh, pretty mean. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, you're atheist, I'm assuming? I mean, this is the first time I'm doing this, so. Yeah, this right. So, what is your, what do you think? Do you think God exists? Yeah, I think God exists. Uh, great. What's your evidence for this thing? Mm, my evidence is, well, I like to preface this first. I am Muslim, so my evidence that God exists is the Quran. Okay, and why do you think the Quran's correct? Why do I think it's correct? Because it's the direct word of God. Yeah, do you see how circular this is? Oh, why is God real? Because the book says so. Well, how do you know the book's true? Because it says it's true, right? It's circular, right? I can use this for the, the, the Christians say this all the time, or the Bible says God's real. How do you know your book is correct and not just lying, right? And not just making up nonsense. How well, do you really know beyond the book, beyond the book, if God's real? You don't. Well, well, I do. I do know that it's real because it has scientific facts and prophecies have been fulfilled. Oh, really? Give an example of scientific facts in the Quran that prove God. Okay. So can I uh, establish a few facts first? If, it's that, if that's okay? Go ahead, sir. Make it quick. Okay. okay. So uh, the person who's the... Who, who got the direct, the, who got the Quran is the Prophet Muhammad. And it's often, a, and he's a person that's already been established as a historical figure. We know that he exists from non Islamic sources, non Muslim okay, sources. Okay, 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 okay. What's your next point? Next point is that he's illiterate. He doesn't know how to read or write. Okay. Okay. So, so if you read the Quran, I doubt that anyone who can read and write can write uh, what you call it, verses in such an elegant manner. But that's because well, that's he, he had people writing it for him. Yeah, that he darkly dictated. Yeah, but exactly. Still, he, he but still, speak, he, right? he could Muhammad he can, speak? Could Muhammad he, speak? 
Yes, he can speak. Okay, great. Can't... So if he can speak, then you can tell somebody to write what he say, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, but he can't read now, or what's write. Your, now, what is the evidence that God exists now? Allah exists. Well, I like to. I like to uh, provide a verse for you in the Quran, chapter twenty-three, seven. I read it to you or we can't hear you when you're out of that live you have to you have to uh, remember it i'm sorry oh, i'm sorry so in chapter in chapter 23 verse 14 it basically describes the formation of the fetus the fajitas the fetus like how uh, oh, the how fetus. Oh, how okay. a fetus is how a fetus is able to um how a fetus forms and the way how it's described basically correlates to modern studies of how fetus are formed or are germinated, basically. So as a person in the seventh we're not we're not plants, we're not we don't germinate. I'm um, sorry. I, I'm sorry if I'm using my embryology? words improperly. But I think you're talking about embryology. Yes, embryology. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the Quran says that semen comes from like the backbone or something. That doesn't happen. Uh not that I not that I know of. I don't think that's what the Quran says, though. But well, it does. Read, the Quran says that the, the semen is made from the backbone. You have, you have yes. proof it for that? It also says that there's a clot. That doesn't happen. I mean, if you want, feel free to read that verse on your own. I mean, all I can provide you is evidence. If you're not willing to take it, that... I don't think there's really you're a point. Not, you're not providing evidence. You're just giving, you're just reciting what a book says. That's not evidence, right? I, well, I am providing evidence. That's basically, no, my evidence, evidence is. Look, ev evidence isn't just like a story. Evidence is something like falsifiable, right? Like something we can verify to be true. Yes. Yes. You can verify um, whether or not no. the embryo is, embryo is formed the way, way, the same way the Quran describes it. No. So it's an 86.7 where it says he created from water um 86 7 let me see let me get the verse out here can't believe i have to do this i mean you how how much are you yeah, willing so to uh, change your position that's why i'm asking the nightly star and what will make you realize what the nightly star is is the start of perceiving brightness. Let people then consider what they were created from. They were created from a spurting fluid stemming from between the backbone and the rib cage. That didn't happen. So I I like to see that verse myself if you don't mind me, all right? No, it's 86.7. Okay, go read it and come back and see what you say. Wait, so you think about that garbage, okay? <sighs> Hello? 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 Oh, bro. I hate Boomers that don't know how to use their cell phones. How do you turn this thing on? Hello? Hello? Hey, what's your evidence? An argument for God. Um, my own personal experience. Um, what you're talking about is the cerebral spinal fluid that runs up your spine and down your spine when you breathe. Um, there's a certain way to do breathing exercises that actually activate your cerebral spinal fluid, no, no, and that's sir, what the please, myth is please, about. Please, 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 please. Do you have an argument for God? I don't care about cerebral fluid. Um, do you have evidence for God now? 
Just give the argument, right? Don't just say, I had an experience. She found my car keys. Give me something good. You have to unmute yourself, Sarah. This is the microphone button. I'm yeah, sorry? So what's your argument for God again? No, 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 no. Uh, it's called, okay, so the, <laughs> the, uh, the in order to uh, access uh, my experience to God, the one that I'm trying to tell you about, I had to learn how to use my cerebral spinal fluid and to go into a meditative state. That's why this is important. I'm not joking. This is not, I'm not, I, I'm a massage therapist. I can't, I don't, I, I couldn't possibly make this up. I mean, massage therapist. I took the time to learn about my body because I have um, uh, scoliosis. So I have, I have consistent spinal issues. Uh, this all does tie together, I promise. So uh, when I was 19, I uh, asked the universe, consistently asked the universe how to, uh, to, to find something, to give me some answer, to tell me something. And I was reading about uh, how to uh, do lucid dreaming and astral projection. And you have to go through different types of breathing. I've, I've just now learning the breathing exercises. I did it when I was 19 accidentally. Um, now I'm 38 years old and I've now been able to recreate this on a regular basis. Um, uh, so if you, I mean, uh, oh, okay. Have you ever heard of, have you ever heard of Kundalini awakening? Okay. 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 Congratulations. You found out how to lose your dream. Does, does this mean God's real now because you found a way to, you know, con, uh, produce hallucinations, self-induce hallucinations to yourself? No, this has nothing to do with God. Lucid dreaming is well documented. It's nothing magical. It's nothing supernatural. It's just fucking hallucinations. It's dreaming. Um, it's the same with near death experiences and out of body experiences, all of which have been produced in, and replicated in labs with hallucinogens. Um, the brain secretes all kinds of hallucinogens too, that can give you these hallucinations. Um, so I'm sorry, this isn't really going to cut it for, for me. I mean, it's something that, nat you know, we can explain naturally. Do you have anything else? Anything supernatural? Well, I mean, uh, I, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me, obviously, but yes, uh, I mean, you know, you know, you can move through time, you know, to your, time doesn't really exist. And uh, you just believe it because it's a thing that. Um... <laughs> That's great. But do you have evidence for God now? Um, what do you need for evidence? What do you what do you look? I don't think he's prepped for this debate. Hello. Hey, what's your argument for God? All right. You need to let me finish before you just mute me or cut me off. Okay. Wait, okay. were you here before? So here before? every, no. Okay. So every single day across the world, events happen and I know you've gotten this argument before, so just relax. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. The textbook definition of a miracle is what? Miracles happen across the globe every day. It's a supernatural event. You're saying what supernatural event? Your evidence. They happen every day. Let me finish. And it's unbacked by science. So your science doesn't back that. That is your clear cut evidence for God. What is your argument? Against, what is your argument against that? Sir, take a deep breath, sir. Relax. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay for you um, too, buddy. When you, define you find God miracles, this. when you define miracles, okay. to me, when you say miracles are rare events, well, then of course miracles exist. They're just air events but if you're talking about something like supernatural like something that natural ex uh, in explanations can't oh, explain, that's that's something different that's something we want it, want to to get from you okay can i give you so can i give you an example yeah okay so i'm a paramedic and i study medicine i study emergency medicine specifically and last year, I'll keep this short and sweet. Last year, I had a call for a 16-year-old boy who drowned in his pool. It was frozen over, it was in the wintertime, December, 2023. And he was under the water for 40 minutes. Uh, we worked him for like 
30, 40 minutes, took him to the hospital without pulses. Doctors ended up getting him back and they had no idea how and they deemed it a miracle because um, after six minutes, the brain starts to, uh, you, when you have hyperfusion, you start to become brain dead. We, we have end organ damage. This is unbacked. Medically, we don't understand how he lived. This stuff happens all the time. That is a right. miracle. So, that is your evidence okay, for God, okay, Mike. Okay, okay, sir. First of all, thank you for your service, by the way. Appreciate you being a paramedic and helping people. That's great. No problem, of course. The, of course. the issue is when you say that, oh, look, this kid was, uh, you know, brain dead or something or we we don't know the doctors can't explain it that doesn't mean that you can explain it okay doctors can be mistaken they can be wrong doctors don't know everything either right so it doesn't give you the right to say well doctors don't know it, what it was therefore god did it number one number two the fact that this child was in the cold water that tells me that his body was more preserved. You're right. Yeah. Cold, the cold you know, has this kind of effect on the body. So I would suggest that that's the key to this situation. Okay, so but, uh, even if we didn't know this, it still wouldn't be the case that God is more likely if we don't know the actual reason why this person was. You're correct. This. But you're okay. being intellectually dishonest. So. I have provided you the evidence that you're seeking and your justification for this unknown event is that we don't have to know everything. So if I give you, a, a, let's say I give you hypothetically more evidence for God, you can just debunk it all by saying, well, our greatest scientists and stuff that I base my beliefs on, well, we just don't, sometimes there's not always an answer. Why is the That's answer not, God? I'm not saying that we don't have an answer, therefore God can't be real. What I'm saying is you don't have enough evidence. You don't have sufficient evidence to convince anybody rational that God exists. That's the problem. Studying paramedicine and doctors going to med school is not enough is not enough um, knowledge? No. It's not enough knowledge to, to demonstrate that God exists, given your example. Jip, I'm looking for something that that isn't just an unknown event. That doesn't mean God did it. That's God of the gaps fallacy. So what does it mean? I'm looking for something uh, so I'm looking for something falsifiable, something we can verify and experiment with like in science. I mean, all right, I don't know, dude. I guess you got me. I, I didn't get you. It's just, you know, we just have to ask better questions. You know, we have to just learn, <clears throat> learn more. Look, the world is going to be mysterious. There's a lot of things out there we don't understand. A lot of mysteries out there we still haven't uncovered. But it doesn't give you the right to say God did it. There could be other explanations. There could be other reasons that do a better job than, oh, God. God did it. By the way, how about the children who die when they drown? What was God doing then? You know, playing Xbox? You know, ordering pizza? Oh, I, get, get the pizza. This kid's drowning? Oh, don't worry about it. And that seems ridiculous to me. I'm too busy playing Xbox, right? That poor kid that's drowning, don't worry about it. Like my pizza's on the way. Hello. Hi, what's your Hello. argument? Uh, I actually don't believe in God, but I was just wondering if I could ask a question to people who do. Or at least like point something out. Um, Cause this is something I've been hearing a lot. Every time there's like a shooting or a tragedy, people, like when people survive, people are just like, oh, uh, God, uh, God protected them. But what about the people who died? Like they deserve to die. I just don't understand that. And people mm, say like, yeah. oh, everything happens for a reason. Why? I mean, I just don't understand the thing of like, oh, well, it's to make you stronger in this life. So you go to heaven. But why? Why does that have to exist in the first place? Yeah, I mean, imagine that pew pew shoot, uh, pew pew school pew pews to make us stronger. Yeah. It, All right. It, Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Hello. Uh, hello. Hey, what's your argument? Um. So you're claiming that. You don't you don't believe in God, right? Right. Okay. Um. I see a lot of people pointing out, oh, the Bible, the Bible. I mean, I feel like nobody is ever gonna get an answer from the Bible. 
The reason I believe in God is order and design. I feel like it points to an intelligent mind. Um, I feel like none of this just happened from nothing to life, if that makes sense. Like, there's no way the Big Bang happened out of nowhere. Like, I don't believe that. I feel like that's absurd. Big, what do you think the Big Bang, if you think it can't happen? What's the Big Bang? Um, Scientifically, like, exactly word by word, I can't tell you what it is. What I can tell you from what I think it is, it's just... The world happened, you know, the everything, the earth, planets, everything, life, basically. But no, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. So, before you critique things like the Big Bang, make sure you okay. fucking understand what it means. I mean, I understand the the, the, the logic happened. in it. I understand look, 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 what what the it Big is. Bang in happened. Simple words. I don't, I can't tell you detail Sam, by detail Sam, what just, it is. Just, just give me a second to respond here. Okay, go for it. The Big Bang happened. It's it's a real phenomenon. It's still happening today. Okay. However, it doesn't mean that it just popped into existence and we all magically configured this way. Okay, in, so in how, how did the Big Bang happen? There was, a, there was an evolution of processes. There was a systematic sequence of things that occurred 13 billion years right. ago right. to right. today, right? So what, the, the reason why we have an earth and trees is because of this evolution. Right. It, it doesn't have to be God at all. There's no evidence of a right. designer. Okay, so... You, you didn't answer my question. So where did the Big Bang hat come from? Like, what was before the Big Bang? That question makes no sense. That's like asking what's north of the North Pole. Exactly. So, so it, 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 like, exactly. Oh, like, oh, like you just use it. No, you, no, don't say exactly. Because your point is what's before that? There might not right, be a before. There might be. There so might be nothing. There valid. might be this. That question there might, might, be, might, be it might not even be God. Who knows? But to me, it's an... Sam, Sam, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Oh, what God? What God? But you're asking these very hard questions that don't lead us to God necessarily. Let's say there was a before the Big Bang. Well, that could be caused by something like a quantum field. That isn't God, right? So right. the point is that there might be natural reasons and natural explanations. Maybe God's not necessary at all, right? That's all I'm right. saying. So what's your evidence that God is true? Okay, here, here gives me another reason. I feel like also the universe is not eternal, or is it? Or you answer me: Is the universe eternal? Nobody knows. No, no, ex no, it's not. It's not. It can't be. The Big Bang nobody happened. Nobody knows. Hey, listen, 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 listen. The Big Bang happened. Knows. Listen, let me talk real quick. The Big Bang happened. That's a start right there. That's where everything started. No, the Big Bang. No, yes, sir. Yeah, no, it has been scientifically no, proven. Sam, yeah. Sam, you don't even know what the Big Bang is. Now you're being arrogant. The Big Bang is not the beginning. It's the end of what we know. The Big Bang is not the beginning necessarily. It's the end of our knowledge of the universe that's observable. So it's not the beginning. It could be. It also could not be. We don't know, right. especially not you. Okay. Then I guess you got me. Um, like at the end, of the, at the end of the day, um. Like the the other reason that what I tell people that don't believe in God is just what do you lose with believing in him? Like, OK, you say you're an atheist, you don't believe in God. You don't know what happens after after you pass away. You just die. Whatever happens, happens. And for me, it's just like I can't live with that. I can't live with knowing that, oh, if I die, I just die. Nothing. I'm never going to see my grandparents, my mom, nobody that passed away before me. So for me also, it's just like eternal life, being able to go back with your loved ones, the ones that passed away before you. I feel like this is a way happier ending than just saying, well, I just died and that's it. There's no more life to it. So what do I, what do I lose from just believing in God? What do I lose with just, just following his rules, believing in God and following the Bible, you following lose, whatever the Bible has to lot. say? You lose your ability to think critically. You lose your ability to be untethered from some ideology that might influence you to do bad things or to think negatively. See, you are thinking in this way okay. that, oh, if I don't believe in God, everything's going to be bad. This right. life has right. no meaning. But when you don't believe in God and you see things as they are in a raw way without this sugar-coated God stuff, okay. things become more potent. Experiences, life, love, these things become way more precious to us. Right. Because they're rare and they're finite, and there is no more after this. And that's why things seem way more precious to me. That's why I cherish life so much right. more as an atheist than I ever did as a Christian. Right. Because right. things are fucking finite and rare, and we're not going to be here again. And that gives this life more importance. 
Right. And I understand where you're coming from. Oh, you know, what about my family who passed away? Of course I want to see them again. Right. But don't you think it might be a bit selfish of you to think this in, that your entire life, oh, let's pray, let's hope, I'm going to see them again. And then you miss out on the now life. You're so focused on the afterlife, you miss right. out on the now life. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. That's that's actually a really good point. Like I said, I, I respect this is just a debate to me. I respect that. I have I have nothing against atheists. I can see where your point is coming from. I have nothing against it. Obviously, for me, it's just I, I can't go with that. Like you said right now, it's just I know you I'm so, you're right so focused. I'm so focused I, I, on, I on the future. I know you can do it now because you're you're so conditioned to believe in God and that all this fluffy stuff duffy stuff is going to happen to you when you die but it just takes you have to be open to this you have to re realize that we're not the, i'm not a bad guy i'm just here to challenge your view and make you think and think the more you think the more you learn the better off you'll be <laughs> hi yo how old are you 27. Okay, and what's your argument? I want to know what what transitioned you from a Christian to atheist? Like what I read the Bible. I, I read the Bible and I realized how ridiculous it is that there's talking oh, snakes oh, and oh, people what, walking on water turning body into bread. That stuff what, never happened. What part? What like what what scripture or what the more I read the Bible, the more I realized how ridiculous it is because I, I was knowledgeable in science. I was literate in science. Hence, when you look at the claims of the Bible, like Adam and Eve, that never fucking happened. There was no ark. There was no Adam and Eve. There were no talking donkeys. It didn't happen. Yeah, but how are you so sure that it didn't happen that that that's the whole because the that's evidence the whole point. is overwhelming the evidence is overwhelming in geology biology that these things aren't real that in the bible but what's your evidence for that for what for for adam and eve and, and these things aren't happening evolution evolution shows us that species change gradually over generations there was no first person there was no first human being was the that first into existence. There is a gradual change uh, over time. I, it's so small and so slow, you can't see it. Okay, I understand that. I, I see where you're coming from. But what I'm saying is, if you're saying things come from a gradual standpoint, and one thing happens to another, and then everything became what you perceive is, how are you tracking what came first if you don't know? What do you mean what came first in what regards what you just said you just said sp specific things happened in a gradual time correct yes this is evidenced by the fossil record by our genetic records by lab experiments all these verify evolution evolution is a fact okay but something has to come before you can't just wake up one day find fossils and then say okay well nothing god is imaginary you know what I mean? Look, look, because look, what comes mind, before look, that? Your, your mind is looking for a beginning. And this is what we naturally do as human beings. We look for a starting point exactly. always. But the problem is that's not how the world really works. In reality, there is no objective starting point. Starting points are arbitrary. Where we designate the beginnings are arbitrary. And it could be the case that time exists forever and it doesn't stop. And there is no beginning. It just always was. But you can't but say there was see, no beginning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. What go ahead. we observe, what we uncover when we look at fossils are remnants of the past, little snippets of the past. Mm -hmm. We put them together into a puzzle. We find as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call the observable universe. Okay. However, the universe we observe may be smaller than what's actually out there. We don't know how big the universe is. It could be infinite. Okay, but if you're saying there's no beginning, how do you start your 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 theory, your thesis, your your whatever your your argument is? Everything has a beginning, even your scientific okay, things. Okay, then where where did God begin? Adam and Eve. God started Adam and Eve. No, I, God, I mean that would the. That's what he first created was Adam. 
Eve came no, from where, Adam's where, where, where did God begin? You said everything had a beginning. Where did God begin? I think that was his main, that was his main, like, his main gate? I mean, why wouldn't it? Because if it was just him, then we wouldn't have been, we, w we wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? There has to be, like you said, you're saying there's no beginning to an end, but even scientifically, even if you're, even if you're going off a scientific standpoint, let's just say you have a, you're, you're not really making much sense here. Look, you believe in God, right? Yeah. Okay, God is like what the Muslim God or the Christian God? The Muslim God. Okay, where did Allah begin? Where did he start? I mean, I can't. I don't. Uh... You see why the question's hard? I'm not. I'm not. This isn't a gotcha, yeah, right? But it's it, it's, it's like a, a hard question because there is no answer. It's the case that if you believe in God, it's typically something that exists always, and that's why we can say this with the universe. Just as you say God always was there, we can say the universe always was, and there was no beginning. Yeah, but you can't say there was no beginning to everything. Sure we can. Why can't we? You just said there's, you literally just said there's no beginning and there's no end. It's just all, all is just one. So it's a possibility, just, yes. Just, Why can't it be possible? Let's just go based off your, like if you're proving a, a scientific method, if you're pulling a hypothesis to figure out something. You have to have a start. You can't just say, I started, I ended, and then I went to the beginning, and then I went to the middle. What do you mean by start? If you're talking about starting our understanding of things, well, then sure, there are starts to our understanding, but there aren't starts to reality necessarily. What do you mean there's no starts to reality? There is no, in other words, if you walked and walked around the universe, there wouldn't be a wall where things start at. It doesn't happen. That's not necessarily the case. Yeah, but I feel like a, I feel like a, I feel like a start and an end of life is human. You were you started. You were born. Your end is your death. What's right, the next but start? The matter, right. We 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 designate the beginning of our life as you know when we're conceived, and then the end when we die. But the problem is that the matter you're made of, the atoms in your body, yep. were still there before you lived. They were in your mom. They were in the air, the atmosphere. Your molecules were found in the atmosphere, in the water, billions of years ago. And before that, in stars, in supernovae, explosions. And before that, at the Big Bang. So, so we can trace back all of your elements, all of your body, back to the Big Bang itself. And that might not be the end. That might There might be more before that. We don't know. So what you're saying is we came from nothing. You came from nothing. You came from... When did I ever say that? You just said, me and you came from nothing. The Big Bang, the stars, the atoms, it, it came... It, we it, always, we could have always existed in some way, in some state. But what's your fact? What, what, if, if we're going based off facts, what's your facts about that? That's, you're just saying that just we to say that. We don't know the facts about the origins of the universe, and neither do you. That's the point here. The point is we don't know what's the what started everything if there it was a start in the first place yeah but all we see are changes over time that's how, all we know how can you say you're right if you can't say how it started of your i'm not saying that I, i'm not saying i'm right in every regards what i'm saying is you haven't supported your claim for god yeah but you haven't supported your claim from evolution you don't think evolution is true I mean, you're not you're not proving any. You you haven't said anything. You haven't said okay, any facts. Well, you haven't. I can give you the evidence for evolution. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. For chromosome it. two. How do you explain chromosomal fusions? Okay. How, how do you did that start? Richard Linsky's experiments in the '90s with uh, E. coli, where mm -hmm. he so, observed their speciation when he introduced magnesium citrate to particular populations that? of E. coli. How do you explain the fossil record, which? explains things like common ascent through analogous and homologous structures in our fossils. How do you explain all this? How do you explain the fact that we can observe mutations in our genes and sequence them back millions of years back to the human chromosome too, which is a direct proof of common ape and chimp ancestry. So are you, is your ideology of chromosome two the beginning of life? I think you're vastly confused. No, I'm not saying this is a beginning of life. I'm saying it's 
it demonstrates it has to start somewhere time. and if that's your main argument Look, Carlin, I, I think you're i think you're severely misunderstanding what's happening because you haven't learned enough science go learn some science go learn what evolution means go learn what the big bang means go learn how the earth formed go learn what the nebular hypothesis is go learn what these things mean and then you can come back and debate me as yeah, right now, you're, you're, you're ill-equipped but okay even with the big bang even with the big let's just start with the big bang you don't right? know what the big bang is let's just start with that you if, don't know if, what if, the fuck you're talking about is now that you're your beginning dishonest. is that your beginning yes or no 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 car on car on car you're making others frustrated because you're ignorant on this look i'm not trying to be mean go learn go learn what these things mean first you're confused <clears throat> And guys, look, there's nothing wrong. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say that that person is invalid because they don't understand these things. But if you're going to be part of these conversations, you need to understand what you're talking about, right? Like, I think we all can agree. Learning is important for these conversations. It's okay to not know things, but what's wrong is to pre pretend you know things when you don't. That's what's wrong. Hello? Hi, um, I'm just curious, like, do you believe there is nothing more superior than human being? In what way? Like, it doesn't need to be God, but like something, some civilization more superior than the human being. Superior in what way? Like intelligence? Intelligent or maybe more powerful? Yeah, sure. there, there could be there could be intelligent aliens out there. What's your point? Or more powerful? Yeah, what's your point? Like, I just think like God doesn't need to be like, I'm, I'm not religious, but I still think there is something more superior than us that might um, help us or created us, if that makes sense. But doesn't doesn't need to be God. Yeah. Do you have any evidence of that nonsense? Like the pyramid or like some um, grand architectures. Yeah, that... So the aliens came down from another galaxy to help the pyramids and then they vanished <laughs> yeah something like that <laughs> let's build the big rocks we're aliens we have technology let's build some big ass rocks in the middle of nowhere all right we're done pack our bags like how do you explain I, 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 just, those I don't think that's i don't think that's likely i think that's unlikely i think oh, what's more likely is that people did it over generations right that those pyramids took decades to build it wasn't like one day right but like the rocks so, are far away from where the pyramid yeah was and there's evidence of canals there is a river near the pyramids so they they probably use canals they dug canals the water came by they put the rocks in the canal oh like the floaters, the, what about them the, the pyramids. Um, they use all kinds of lev lev levers and things and jacks and stands and there are many many reasons we but know those are just pyramid. theories it's not proven right like the rocks from okay, the but neither are, neither are aliens proven right but the point is that there's good evidence that there were they're likely people making pyramids not some green fucking alien from outer space there isn't yeah. enough evidence for that though like or, or but, like but there, the, but, but there, the is. Sculptures, there is there is there sculptures is sculptures from the um from the uh, yeah i'm not going to talk about the fucking pyramids <laughs> Maybe some other day. Hello? Hello? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Uh-huh, good. 
That's good. Am I coming through clear? Unfortunately. <laughs> All righty. Um, so your question is, God is imaginary. Can you prove me wrong? Um, I'm a Christian. I believe in the uh, Christian God. And I believe that I can help you understand him better than what you see in evolution. So you don't believe in evolution? I do not. Nope. Okay. Nope. You have evidence for God now? I do, yes. Um, so I can explain to you how God works because what you do and what and, it, and, and it's not your fault because it's what is exposed to you on earth and it's what people have taught you, right? And it's what's available out there. It's what's what people believe to be common knowledge is that we tend to put God in a box and compare him to ourselves. But the thing is, is that God is like the man who created the computer. So the man who creates the computer is not inside the computer working everything. He's on the outside. So when God said, let there be light, he created a trinity of trinities, time, space, and matter, solid, liquid, glass, solid, liquid, gas, and space or length, width, and height, right? A trinity of trinities that can't exist without each other. So let there be light. Yeah, you let, can't let, have let, time let, without I'm, space. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of this shit. Without I space. Be, I don't want to be preached at. I want good reasons to believe in God. So yeah, that, the thing is, is it's, it, it is a faith-based religion. It is. It's a faith-based religion on a God that you've never seen. And that's where the reward okay, comes. Okay, so let me ask you one more time, Miles. I'm not Absolutely. trying to be rude. For sure, for sure. Do you sure. have evidence of God or just faith before I kick you? I have had I have had interactions with God personally, but it starts with faith. Oh, what do you say? What, is he white? It starts with faith. No, it comes through signs. It comes through him. It comes through him guiding you. You know, you'll have a day where you feel like, okay, this particular issue is plaguing my day, and you happen to open the Bible, and the Bible verse is exactly what deals with your issue, and God will speak to you in that way. He'll speak to you through Scripture. He'll speak to you through situations, through job opportunities, through other people. Um, you know, he's, oh, so there's, there's, there's no, no chance right that you top. just there's, there's no chance that you happen to have some confirmation bias here, right? No, no, absolutely. No, and, okay. And, and, so there's, there's no, exactly. There's no bias there. Every time you see, every time you think about God and you see a stop sign, that's a sign that God wants you to stop, right? No, no. It's that. That's oh, called. Okay. okay. So then, you, so then, you, what's your method you're using to determine that the signs you're seeing are connected to God and not just your own bias? Okay. Instead of instead of being on the tangent, you know, let's let's stick to if God is imaginary or not. So. Like I said, you try to put God, and I'm not, you know, just civil debate, not accusing you of nothing. I'm just saying, with the knowledge that you have, you are putting God in a box. You're saying that he should okay, be like let's me. take God out of the okay. box. Let's unwrap the box. Let's sure. take God out. Okay. What's your evidence of God now? Okay, for sure. So, okay. I mean, look, I'm trying to explain to you this way, but, you know, if you're solid reasoning is evidence there's no evidence for macro evolution the stuff you speak oh, about is on, there is no oh evidence. my gosh even if evolution was false it doesn't mean god is real number one number two evolution is a fact of reality period Hello? Hey, what's up, man? You hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I was on earlier. I was talking about uh, slavery. So yeah, it's wrong. Obviously, selling your daughter is wrong. So then why do you believe in God? Why do you love a God that tells you to do that? <laughs> it's wrong, the, with the by what God said, but I'm still going to follow him. Hello? What's up, man? Hey. Hope you're having a good day. So what's uh you believe God's not real, right? Yeah. So how do you believe the everything came to be? How do you it believe didn't, that? It didn't just it didn't like come to be in like a day, right? This isn't like Genesis where six days the whole world was fucking made by with clay, right?
Yeah. There's a clearly there's a, a long process that happened. So, um, evolution, cosmic evolution, biological evolution, you know, science. Um, do you believe we came from something or just came from nothing? Like we just came to be? So I don't I don't get like atheists view of how we came to be. Look, you're you're looking for like this like place we came from, like you know, like some kind of like Uber, like, oh, we're, who dropped us off here on Earth? There was no space Uber. There was no human factory that was, all right, guys, get the thing. Let's make some more people. All right, get the arms, get the legs. All right, put them together. All right, throw them on Earth. That didn't happen. What's happening is you're, the complexity of nature you see around you stems from evolutionary features, evolutionary processes over billions of years. Now, remember, the Earth is billions of years old. It's not 6,000. So there's a lot of time before we are here. And because there's lots of time and slow processes, that explains our existence in this way. Again, no God required, just okay. scientific principles. Okay, well, I just came here to learn from you. I want to know what the Big Bang is. You know, how, how, what is that? The Big Bang. Like, if you can tell me what it is. The Big Bang? Yes, sir. <laughs> the Big Bang was a time when the universe, as we know it, was smaller, hotter, and denser, and then rapidly in inflated into the universe we know today. Space and time, think of it like a balloon, it's stretching. If you blow up a balloon, the skin stretches, right? Just like space and time, it's stretching. And we're being dragged along with it through space time. And that's the Big Bang. The Big Bang's still happening today, and it's not an explosion. It's not where one day everything exploded and we just popped into existence. That's not the Big Bang. It's just a, the phase, a phase the universe in, in its entirety goes through. That's and, all. And that's how everything was made or, or everything was just here? No, nothing was made. Uh, what's that, what, what you're seeing is a collection of particles that through time have configured themselves in certain ways governed by physical law. Now... I'm asking you for evidence of God. It seems like you're just asking questions, though, right? Well, yeah, cause I, I don't really get the way atheists believe that we were just here. Okay, great, great. So then what you got to do, Francisco, is learn. Learn, baby, learn. Read some science, right? So Look at, you, learn the Big Bang. Things? Learn evolution. Learn how these things work. Then you'll so, come up here with better arguments. So life comes from non-life? Is that what you believe? It's a fact. Life so, absolutely so you know, it's, comes more, from it's more reasonable to believe that life comes from non life and non life comes from life. It's reasonable to a Christian who doesn't know jack about science, but to a scientist, it happens every day in your body. Life is merely a process, non life is just an object that life is what objects do, right? Life is yeah. what non life, non -life is, does, it's a process. So replication of our DNA, DNA is not a living thing. DNA is not alive. It's just a molecule. It's all DNA is. It's a fucking molecule. But what it does makes it alive. And that's why we're alive, because of the chemical processes that so we're, so we're us. chemicals? So you're saying we're chemicals? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Humans are collections of chemicals. So how do you believe that we, that we experience feelings such as love? Great question. What's a feeling? What's a thought? These are fantastic questions. And the answer lies in our brains. Your brain's a vast network and it works electrically. These are electrochemical reactions. And those electrochemical reactions yield thoughts and feelings, love, right? All these things are triggered by certain hormones in the brain that give rise to thoughts and feelings. And they're all physical and it's amazing because it's physical, because we're all just physical beings operating via chemicals, these feelings of love make it more amazing because it's all natural and there's nobody doing it. So were you a Christian before you were 18? Like, were you like really close to God? Or I was a Christian way before uh, ten, about 10 years ago. And were you really devoted to it or were you just more like a, not really close to him type deal? I... I don't care. I, I, I used to believe in him, but do you have any evidence for God before I kick you? Uh, I do, but like, I, I just don't really understand the way you atheists believe that we were. Then learn. 
And that's great. You guys want to come up here and ask questions, but you got to learn on your own time. Hi. So I how, wanted how to kind of... Uh, how old are you? Oh, uh, I'm 23. Okay. And what's your... What do you guys say? Um, I kind of wanted to go off of what the uh, the previous speaker was talking about. So you said that you you were a Christian previously, correct? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask what it was that um, kind of triggered the uh, the separation from that? I read the Bible and I realized it's in the garbage. Okay. Uh, could you give me some examples? Because I'd love to discuss that with you. But I, yeah, I, I mean, Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve is nonsense, right? Talking snakes, talking donkeys, Noah's Ark never happened. There is actual proof of Noah's Ark. Oh, really? Where? Where's the proof? They have... Uh, I know that there's proof. This sounds stupid. I don't know the specific proof. I know how that sounds, um, but there is actual proof of Noah's Ark. They have, um, I know that they have geographical proof. They have, uh, there's the scrolls that speak about it. You mean, you mean geological? Okay. You, whatever. You know what I mean. Can you give me other situations as well, though? Like, what was it aside from just, because I know that we can read the Bible. We can read the Bible. We can come up with several different uh, takeaways from it, as in, yeah, so let, let me just respond to the Ark thing, right? If the Ark was real, where the fuck did – how the fuck did the penguins get to Antarctica, which is an island continent, right? That means if the penguins are dropped off, as the Bible says, in Turkey, th that means the penguins had to waddle across the Turkey deserts, the Saudi Arabian deserts. They had to waddle across Africa the entire length of the continent, thousands of miles, waddle, waddle, waddle. And then they had to jump into the Arctic Ocean, or the Antarctic Ocean, another couple thousand miles. <sighs> Keep swimming, penguins. And then they had to jump onto Antarctica and survive there. <laughs> no food, no water, nothing. It's a desert. It's complete ice. There's nothing to eat there. How the hell did this happen? But how did the fucking kangaroos get to Australia from the, from the Turkey? Did they hop the way across the Asian islands and how, how the hell do you do that? How do you explain all this stuff? How do you explain the fact that we don't have, where did they put all the shit on the boat? All those animals, they didn't, wait, wait, all that shit, lions, tigers, bears, uh, dinosaurs, right? If you, you're saying they're all going to be on the ship. Where'd all the shit go? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Look, I really wanted to talk to her. I really did because she was a very kind person, just misguided. Um, it's hard to tell somebody that their book is garbage. It's hard to do that. I don't like doing it. I wish I could tell you the book's real. I wish, I really wish I could say that to you. The Bible's real, right? I just, I want to be honest and truthful and I want to give good reasoning. I want to be rational, right? Not just emotional. Um, so I really do wish she was still there so I could talk to her more, but. Oh, where he let me on. Yeah, how's it going? Hi. Yeah, so I wanted to know, are you arguing, like, if, like, religion is, is garbage, or are you arguing that, like, that there's not an intelligent mind behind our existence? Like, if my perception of God was there's an intelligent mind behind our existence, would you say that's not a valid claim? There's no evidence of an intelligent mind behind our life. Okay. I mean, take a look at the the way our we have to eat and, and, and okay. drink every day or no, else we true. die. It's a curse. Well, what I'm going to tell you is we neither of us can be right because it's all perception at the end of the day. And Well, I'm not saying I'm right here. What I'm saying is 
you don't have sufficient evidence for your claim about God, right? That's what I'm... Okay, but I'm going to try to explain what my, my evidence is. So you're talking about the Big Bang Theory, right? Mm -hmm. Me personally, you th think it was just energy that built up and expanded, but I believe it was a conscious singularity that needed to express itself to expand. Therefore, it needed an intelligent mind. So the singularity was intelligent it was is a guy in there it was conscious it had to be because i gotta why, express myself no, just listen. Uh, that's how it happened well why do you seek to live if you're not conscious it's like saying the unit if we're here now and we're conscious you can't say that the big bang wasn't conscious <laughs> you don't need somebody you don't need somebody to make the big bang look I know it's not somebody. I'm not saying it's a deity, some guy in the sky. All I'm saying look, is that this, it requires some sort of. You're, you're succumbing to the same issues the ancients fell for. But look, you see thunder come down. It's loud. It sounds angry. So what you want to do, it, what you want to do is appeal to some kind of person. I, I don't think it's a person. You want to personify. Hold on, hold on. You want to personify nature by saying, "Oh, look, the thunder comes down. It sounds angry. There must be somebody angry behind the thunder." And that's what the agents did with the with Zeus, right? He was this, the thunder god, and the, this with the water god, and the Poseidon god, and the the earth god, the fire god. This is what you're doing today. Well, the universe is expanding. There must be somebody doing that. When I think this is a mistake, I think what you're doing is trying to personify things unjustly. When in reality, we don't know. There could be a natural reason. There could be there could be. The universe doesn't need to have consciousness. It could just be indifferent to us. And shit just happens, you know? No, we don't I, know. I, I'm listening. I agree with your point, but I'm not. I think you're getting me confused for like a, a Christian or like a, a Muslim that's saying, all right, I worship this God, right? Uh, I, I put my problems, I blame my problems and put it on Look, something. Just, just, give your evidence, just give your evidence for this God. Well, I'm not saying this God. I think it depends on your point. I'm, I think you're confusing my definition of God, right? Do you think you're God's saying, this conscious, intelligent being, right? Behind the universe, right? I don't think it is. A, I'm saying the universe is conscious, and that is my definition of, of God, just an intelligent okay, mind so behind the consciousness. How, how do you, what makes you think the universe is conscious versus it not being Be, conscious? Because if it wasn't conscious, it wouldn't want to express itself and expand just like we humans do every day. We wouldn't, okay. we wouldn't live in a reality if we didn't want to express ourselves okay, let, let and, and learn this. about ourselves. Let me ask you this. So you're basically saying no, it no, shouldn't no, exist. Let, let me ask you this question. We have two worlds, world A and world B. In world A, there's a conscious being that expands the universe. In world B, there is no conscious person expanding, and the universe naturally expands. Okay. What's the difference between these two universes that hint to a conscious th the one doing it? The difference being is you're saying that the universe isn't conscious. But if the universe wasn't conscious, you wouldn't exist. What's the difference between these two universes? I, st I still that's, exist that's, in the world where there is no consciousness. Repeat that for me. I still exist in the world without consciousness. I don't think you do, though. That's that's my Why argument. Why not? Why not? Why would I vanish if there's no conscious universe? Because if you weren't conscious, there would be no reason for you to exist. That's the whole reason thyself explores thyself. It's because you're ex it's expressing to learn itself so in new everything forms. Everything that's not conscious yeah. doesn't exist. Say that again. So everything that's not conscious doesn't exist. I wouldn't say that. Well, that's what you just said. That's not everything, what I said, though. We wouldn't, we wouldn't exist if we weren't conscious. Does that mean rocks don't exist? Does that mean dirt doesn't exist? The sky doesn't exist because it's not conscious? This is what your logic leads to. Okay, it's matter, but it's not... That doesn't... You can't define consciousness based off of just matter. Yes, there's scientific evidence that points no, we can. to the sure big things. Huh? No, you can't. Why is that a valid claim? What do you think consciousness is? I believe it's our ability to learn thyself. The fact that we ask about our consciousness is proof that we're conscious. Like, 
Yeah, the problem is that consciousness seems to be something physical in my eyes. Consciousness seems to be something like the sum total of what's happening in the brain. Okay. The, the emergent phenomenon of the electrochemical processes going on in the brain. And the brain's a vast network of electricity. And that, to me, is what generates this conscious experience. So I don't think that there's so you, anything non-physical about ourselves unless you, you have evidence. So you think all your conscious experience comes from you? Absolutely. And not the things you experience? Experience is consciousness. They're, they're synonyms. But that's not a valid claim. You can't say that there's not an an intelligent mind if everything you know doesn't come from yourself it, be, it comes from your environment therefore everything you are I learning everything you brain. learn you learn from something else not yourself yes so there's therefore a, you are you are learning from some sort expert. of intelligence no are you not learning no. from some sort of intelligence come on I'm buddy learning from, i'm learning from information from the outside world that's not no that is intelligence because information that you take that's not a form of intelligence buddy so when I look at the sun and I see the sun, that's intelligence. It's not saying that, but it's saying oh, that well, that's what you're you, saying. you you're rely saying on these things to live. So for you to say you're being ignorant to say that you don't rely on some sort of intelligence. If you rely on all these other things to live, you don't live because you live, you're you live because everything else. Sir, you're confused. I don't need anybody else to, to, I can learn from something that's not intelligent. I can learn from, from the environment. That's just information. Okay. Everything I know comes from my brain. I could be influenced by other people, but everything I know is coming from me. There you go. Everything you know, you can say it comes from you because you seek it, right? But you're not the source information, though. So therefore, you're learning exactly. from something. Exactly. There's an external world that's influencing me. All right. I agree. So if, if we're agreeing, is it also fair to say that is some sort of intelligence because no, why does that? How does it follow? Right, so now that, you, that everything. So, so you're just changing the definition of intelligence all of a sudden and confining it to one. No, what are you talking view? about? You're so confused. Do you think the sun is an intelligent thing? I do. I do. I think the the universe is an intelligent thing. I can't talk thing. to this person. The <laughs> Hello? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, so I would agree with the the statement that there isn't sufficient evidence to, uh, I guess, to uh, say that God does necessarily exist. But I think saying that God is imaginary um, <clears throat> goes a little bit too far, just because uh, because God, like I guess you could say, the theistic model gives a rationale. To understanding the universe so does greek mythology it doesn't make it any more correct that okay, theism, no. is, theism is a poor way of, of understanding the world there's way better ways right well for example i think theism gives a good um gives a, a good understanding as to how consciousness exists how we can like know anything yeah, that's garbage. I don't need theism to know what consciousness is, and it doesn't explain it very well in the first place. I mean, consciousness well, yeah, is not explained in the Bible. It gives a decent foundation that can be built upon. So does Greek mythology. It's the same shit. Look, dude, you think theism well, I, is so would, good. You no, believe the same shit the Egyptians believed in, the Egyptian gods, the, the Roman gods. You believe in that same shit. Nothing well, different. If, if the Egyptians, if the Greeks, the pagans, whoever, said that there was a a mind that gave um i guess logic and rules to the universe and i guess at, at, at like to some degree that oh you're a pre-sub okay yeah no i'm not i'm not yeah I'm you not, don't have I'm to not. there is no such you don't, you don't need a mind to ground the laws of logic and stuff beyond I'm our own mind. Our, I'm, I'm not our, our minds our minds and our minds alone can ground these things logic and reasoning and rationality you don't need something outside our minds I'm not saying you necessarily do. I'm just saying, like, okay. The point. So then, what is your evidence for God now? The re I, when I came up here, I stated that there isn't any explicit evidence for God, but okay, cool. Thank you. Is. Next victim. Um, could I, I? I'm just gonna say a quick question, and then I'm gonna leave. Can I say a quick question? 
Mm-hmm. Um, so the guy was talking about, you know, he was talking about like, like we have a consciousness in our brain, right? So like, exp- could they explain people, those people that have like strokes or, you know, like they don't remember anything, right? Like people that have like, you know, like go into a car accident and they're, they're, they're like, just like brain damage. So like, where's the soul there, you know? So that's why I do agree with you. You know, I do agree with everything you're saying. You agree with me? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you're. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I was just agree. I was. All right. Get the next victim in here. Hey, how are you? Hello. Remember to flush and wipe. I still feel bad for that girl that came on, right? About the arc. I still feel bad about that. Hello? Somebody just go to bed. They're running. They're scared. Hello? Yo, yo, hello? Hey, what's your argument today? Uh, I want to discuss uh, fine tuning. Okay. Yeah, because also, you know, Brooks did uh, debate you in that and you kind of lost. But, um,. I want to discuss fine tuning. So, uh, what's your observations on fine tuning? My observations on fine tuning? There is no fine tuning in my view. It doesn't exist. Why do you think that? Because we don't know the possibilities out there. This might be the only universe such that the only the universe is by necessity this way, and there is no other way you can tune it. I mean, that's true, but that's also it's kind of like also like a theory. When you think about uh, like fine tuning, I mean. Like the conditions that it took for like our universe, like the way everything is placed, it it's super unlikely to occur by chance when you think about it. There has okay, to be how, old, how old are you? How old are you? Fucking. Oh, yeah. I can destroy you. Doesn't even know what fine tuning is. <laughs> Look, the reason why fine tuning fails is because it assumes that that the chance of us existing is small when we don't know the chances of us existing. The universe could be. This might be the only universe such that this is the only way it could be, right? There also could be an infinite number of universes, and if that's the case, then of course we'd exist. It's one out of inf- an infinite. Um, we don't know the, how many possibilities are. In other words, when I roll a die, I know there's six sides to it. So if I, before I roll that die, I know it's, it's a one out of six chance of me rolling a two. So when I roll the die, I know that all the possibilities, but when I roll the die of the universe, I don't know how many possible universes there are. So we can't say we know the chance of it being low or high. We don't know. So again. Again, I, I don't remember you. Uh, what do you got? Oh, uh, uh, so you, I, I'm the guy who presented the Quran as evidence. So if you don't remember that. The what? The Quran as as my evidence for God. Oh, okay. Uh, but before I start again, I like to you know th- thank everyone, thank you for teaching me something I didn't know about the Quran. I really appreciate that, you know, getting me to learn. And I think you know, learning is very important for everyone. You know, there's some things that Absolutely. we don't, some things that we don't know, and you know, that's how we. 
that's how we learn through asking questions and everything like that and through debating and you know i appreciate you. i appreciate you doing all, all this you know i i think you're very knowledgeable in in, in your uh i'll say field of science i guess or I don't know how to properly word my phrases. <laughs> Sorry if I'm sounding a little awkward. This is my first time doing this, you know? Yeah, man, no problem. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to come up here and say that. So, yeah. hey, how soft to you. appreciate that. And look, it's not about me. I, I'm not that smart. I'm, I, but what you should be doing is learning. That's all I'm here to do. I'm here to yeah. make people learn and, and, and question themselves. And that's all I care about. I don't even care if you believe in God or not. I can care less. I care if you learn. If you're open to learning, that's all I care yeah. about. Yeah. Thank you. And right. th thank you for having me. But I still, I, the thing I want to leave off is that uh, if you're really interested in learning if God exists, then I do recommend you just read the Quran just on your own. Because I doubt that through how many people come up here, I don't think you're ever going to change your position on God's if God's imagined, unless someone's really good I've at read debating. Enough, I, read, I read enough of the Quran to realize it's not only wrong in terms of science, it's also immoral. Like in chapter, there's a whole chapter in the Quran, number four, that talks about how to treat your woman. It tells you that you can beat somebody. You can beat your wife if she dis disobeys you. That's wrong to me. So yeah, have you read like anything about the interpretation about that? Like how I'm, scholars I, I interpret it. I, I don't think there's any context in which you should ever lay hands on your wife if she disobeys you. I think that's wrong. Mm. Fair enough if you believe that. But I, I, pers I personally believe that there are some instances where force is necessary if, if your life is threatened. Like it, or in domestic abuse yeah, situations. Yeah, that's not the context of the verse. Right? The verse says you can beat your wife with a little... Yeah, Just, but not uh, to the point. Not something. to the point of leaving a scar, though. And it's like yeah, in so the worst case scenario. So, so that means the Quran allows you to smack your wife in the face without leaving a mark, and that's okay, right? No, not to the point where it causes harm. Well, let's say it's just a smack. Is that okay? It doesn't I'm, cause any harm. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? It's just a smack like that. Is that okay to do to your wife? No, it's literally oh, a light it's, top. It's, it's, it's no harm. It's just a smack. It's literally like tough, but at that point, you're not even for, you're not even a good husband at that point. So you you. Well, pretty that's much what the Quran allows. So that's what the Quran allows, though, right? No, I don't think. Go, don't disobey me. There you go. That's what the Quran allows you to do. Mm, I think you. I think your interpretation is a still uh, faulty, to be honest. But you know. Well, okay. we're still here to learn and keep everything. Learning, sir. Keep reading the Bible, keep reading the Quran. And one day you'll go, wait a minute. This is shit. This shit's crazy. <laughs> Fucking flying donkey to the moon. What the hell is this shit? Hello? Hi. Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, so uh, how much have you looked into Christianity? Too much. Too much. Okay. And what are your main problems with Christianity? Where do I begin? It's completely false in terms of like the, the, the origin story, the Genesis story is nonsense. There's lots of immoral issues with uh, uh, Exodus and Deuteronomy and slavery and all that stuff it allows. Um, it's garbage. Well, okay. I'll talk about the slavery part first. Where do you say it allows slavery? I know, I, I know, like, I, I think I know what you're referencing, uh, but specifically, what what would you say is allowing right with slavery? Leviticus twenty five forty four, uh, Exodus twenty one twenty. Leviticus twenty five forty four. Well, a these are all Old Testament, and they're not necessarily backed by the New Testament. So the lots of this is ceremonial, and and stuff like that, but also when you look at the context of like what, because I've heard this a lot that it allows slavery. It's not the, the type of slavery back then. It wasn't like you were a, you were a purchased slave. Like for example, in how, how it was in America, it was slavery was a way to pay off a debt. So like you could, and you could be a slave. Yeah, Lucas, before you go into this nonsense, you know, the Bible allows you to beat your slave with a rod. 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes, it does. Exodus 21. Exodus 21? Yes. Where can you read it to me, please? Oh my gosh. I have to read your own Bible. Well, I have I don't have this memorized. I'm sorry. I, I like I'm just asking you to read what you're quoting. I'm just saying. <clears throat> yeah, don't worry. If a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken, for he is his property. And what what translation is this? It doesn't matter which translation, they all say that garbage. Well, no, you can't say they all say that garbage. There are some there are some translations that are that can be misleading with their wording. But either way, even if we even if we take that into consideration, what we look at in the New Testament, which is what we go by, because since Jesus came and died for our sins, that's what changed everything. And then the Apostle Paul writes about specifically. So you think by, it's okay? So you, so you do you think it's okay to beat your slave with a rod? Absolutely yes not. No? no, absolutely not. Oh, and so that, God's command? Because remember, Exodus is God's commands, right? It's God's law. So do you think God's law was wrong? It's not that God's law was wrong. It's that we didn't have our savior yet. And it's God, this, God, God wrote the Bible, right? Yes, but God had to do certain things. God also allowed okay, divorce. So God also allowed God's divorce. Laws, under the, so those God, are God's laws. God also, God also allowed divorce under the Old Testament. When, when the, when the, when the religious leaders came and asked Jesus, so, so Jesus has come now. Lucas, Lucas I, I really don't want to do this again. This is like the third time today that our, our guests are just being dishonest on this. Yes or no? Do you think when God allowed you to beat your slave with a rod, was that a good command by God or was that a bad command by God? Bad or good? Please answer one word. Bad or good law? Well, look, do you want me to, do you want to bait me or respectfully, do you want me to, do you want to hear my full answer? Because I'm trying to give you my full answer. It's either bad or good, sir. It's either a bad law or a good law. Which one is it? Well, do you want, do you want to hear my full answer or no? It's not, it's not up to me to determine if it's a it bad law. It shouldn't be hard. It's either a yes or it's either good or bad. It's not, it's, not up, it's not up to me to determine this, but do you want to hear my full answer? Look, if you, look, if you really want to know the truth, hear me out that's all if you really want to hear the truth just hear me out okay okay so when jesus came and he and the religious leaders approached him and he said that basically we shouldn't divorce he said let not let not man separate what god has put together meaning we should not divorce what, you, our wives. what kind of gibberish is this blah, 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 blah. we're talking about what? the exodus 21 verse you do you want to hear me good? out <laughs> you want to pivot to something irrelevant what? do you want to hear me out it's it has it has relevance now let's try this one more time guys when god commanded it when god in law said we can we can we can beat our slaves with a rod was that a good law by god or is that a bad law by god bad or good Look, do you want to hear my full answer or no? Because we can, we can do this all day. Jesus told the religious leaders. All right, that have he, a good day, Lucas. It uh, seems strange to me that the so-called authorities about morality can't answer simple questions about morality. Like, to me, it's simple. It's bad. Why do they have to make so many excuses? Well, the uh, 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 divorce, the uh, law, uh, penguins, uh, Antarctica, Noah's Ark. Yes or no? Good or bad? It's that simple. <sighs> All right, so the next victim here. I mean, guest. Hello? Hello. How old are you? Hello. Okay, the next guest. Hello. What's up? Hey, what do you got? Uh, so the reason why I believe 
God exists first, my uh, personal experience, but I won't go into that for now. But second reason why I think there is a God is because if there was no God, then I don't think there'd be any objective morality, like the same way if there wasn't a lawmaker, there'd be no <laughs> laws. But since there is objective morality, I I feel like that points to a God. Okay, are you Christian? Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, so when God says in the Bible that you can beat your slave with a rod, was that objectively good or bad? Again, uh, that what what's that? What that is referencing to is that at that time, slavery within Israel it was meant to be far more humane. The practice the practices were good, and uh, but when they truly disobeyed them, like because they were treated well. Yes, that is what God they were, said. They were what, treated well, sir. They were God instructed them to be in, beaten. Uh, in back, God instructed wait, wait, them wait. to be beaten with a rod. Let, let me let me make this clear for you. In Exodus twenty one twenty to twenty one, God says that you can beat your slave with a rod if they don't die. Is that good or bad? You tell me, sir. Uh, not so good. Thank you. Thank you for finally answering. It's bad. Okay. Thank you. So, do you, you agree that you disagree with God when he instructed this, right? Well, I'm not sure exactly what God was meaning when he said that, but <laughs> I'm probably, I guess no. I would disagree with him, but I, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's try this one more time to squeeze it out you. Do you think God's law was wrong or good? Well, it wasn't really a law, but I, yeah, it wasn't too good, but I, yeah, it All wasn't, right. it wasn't command. Ooh, it's like, it's like, it's like pulling teeth. And look, guys, the reason, the reason why it's so hard for them to answer is because they are so tethered to, they're so attached. They're so, uh, they're so attached to this Bible, right? And that's one of the fundamental reasons why I'm not religious. It, it's it like, it changes you. It's like a, you're like literally like a slave, it changes you to this book and everything must follow from that book in your world. I think that's so, that's so sad. Whereas in my mind, I see things way more freely. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't look through a book. Right? I don't have the God goggles on. I got everything's God. I'm able to free myself from those ideologies and look at things in a more unbiased way. You know, and that's that's something you I would never trade. <clears throat> How's it going, sir? Great. How are you? I'm all right. So I'm just like live hopping right now. I'm a little buzzed. So what is this about? Is this, are you like against God or what's going on here? Yeah. Um, do you have evidence for God or no? Evidence. I don't know. I just, I believe everyone's got different beliefs and it just it is what. No shit. All right. Next. Let's see. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. Uh, I'm not a Christian. I'm an atheist. But I had a couple of questions for you, if that's okay. Because I, I love listening to you. So, uh, I love listening to the show and all that. But I was curious, if black holes expand the universe, why exactly would people need a god for that? I don't know. But I can tell you. I have a set of skills. These skills make people like you go to bad places. I will find you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. I shouldn't have done that. And I, I actually like this accent. That was a pretty cool accent, if that was real. 
All right, let's hit the next victim here. Oh my God, finally. Okay, can I just start off with the evidence and everything? Yes, okay, I yeah. love you. The concept of the concept of God offers the most comprehensive and logically coherent explanation for our universe's existence. It solves the problem of infinite regress, the endless chain of why questions, by p positing a necessary being that exists independent independently and does not require a cause. This necessary being provides a foundation for the laws of nature, morality, and the fact that we can understand the universe at all. Scientific evidence strongly suggests that the universe had a beginning. The second law of thermodynamics tells us that if the universe were eternal, it would have already reached a state of maximum ent entropy, where, where no usable energy remains. Yet we still observe active processes yeah. indicating that the universe had a finite start. The expansion of the universe, first observed by Edwin Hubel, shows that the galaxies are moving away from each other, implying that the universe is expanding from a significant point in size. Excuse me, did you, did you often say called Excuse the me? Big Bang. No, 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 no. This is my written response. Did you say Hubel? <laughs> okay. Let me address this real quick. First of all, it didn't answer the why question, right? The first thing you said, it answered the why question. Well, why does God exist, right? We can ask that to God. Um, but yeah, it's not Hubble, it's Hubble. And just stop reading, put the book down and start like giving a solid syllogistic form argument, right? With like premises and stuff. And I don't want to, I don't want like you to read your essay from high school. Right, so let's hear it again. It is, it's not an essay from high school. It's actually an anecdote taken from an atheist versus a Christian debate coming, uh, which were, was the person's final statement. I just added the evidence. If you want to know where it com comes from, I can even tell you where it's from. Yes. Can you just get the um, argumentation? Yeah, I, I didn't even finish it. But if you want uh, more evidence, is additionally the board guth Villikin theorem demonstrates that any expanding universe must have a finite past. Philosophically, the idea of an infinite regress is a logic is logically impossible. There must be a first cause, and then the Kalam cosmological argument reinforces this by showing what whatever begins to exist must have a cause. Since the universe okay. began to okay. exist, okay, it too must okay, have a cause. Okay, Batman. Okay, and, Batman. Okay. No, no, no. It also ha there's more to it. Oh, oh, hold um, on. Let me take it step by step. Okay. You made a claim that infinite, infinite past is impossible. Mm -hmm. When you say something's impossible, that implies there's a contradiction, right? So go ahead and give us the contradiction that would render an infinite past impossible. Go. You would always end up with the question that where did that come from? Always, because if the universe has the law that everything has to have a cause, you would always end up with a beginning. But I haven't even hold on, finished hold it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When you invoke the word "why," you, that it typically term like means an explanation for something. There are things such as brute facts which don't require explanations, right? So the universe can be a brute fact, just is unexplained. So that's why that's not a good reason. I'm asking for a contradiction, entailed by the logical entailments of the idea that infinite, pa uh, infinite. An infinite pass is possible. Do you have that contradiction? I'll try one more time with you, but if you can't give it, then. I didn't even finish the more evidence to it. Uh, can I finish that and then answer that? And then you, because I really want to finish. I, I really don't want to hear your book. Although I'm not saying that your book is bad. I just don't want to hear it right now. I want evidence for God. Gotham City. That was hilarious, bro. He wants to read. Yo, Mike. Um, I do happen to agree with you, but I have some decent questions, if you don't mind. 
Um, well, you know what? I'll just go for it. When it comes to epistemics, um, uh, I find it I find it somewhat hard to come up with an ideology, especially as like a materialist and someone that doesn't believe in God. And whenever whenever I go on these precepts lives, it's honestly unbearable. And I don't understand. Like when they say, I say like, sure, logic's ontology is in the brain and in the mind, but. I don't know. They just seem to have a fit with that and say that that doesn't seem to make sense. Ask him for the contradiction. Ask him why it's impossible. So, yeah, I agree. And so what I'm trying to point out in those like sort of debates is like circular reasoning. I don't object to that because don't you agree that an atheist also has to in, indulge in some sort of circularity to even have a rational point? Uh, yeah, there, at some point there's going to be circularity. I mean, the, the idea that we are even using logic, you have to presuppose your, your axioms, right? You have to presuppose some axioms are true before you can start logically assessing things. Sure. But, and that's, uh, but this applies to the theist too. So uh, Exactly. It's not, it's not do anything that a naturalist couldn't do by saying that, you know, logic is coming from the brain. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's what all I try to point out um, is that, you know, both hold to, you know, some sort of circularity. But what, uh, you know, ideology do you hold to when it comes to epistemics? Because I, whenever I get in these debates, they say, oh, well, you, don't, you know, this ideology, how do you, you know, make this argument when it comes to this ideology and this ideology? And it seems at a certain point, there's like, what, which one is correct? The, the precepts want to assume that there has to be, it has to be God or no other option. Ask him why it's impossible for other options to be true. If they can't show it, then their, their argument's question begging. It's a fallacious argument. You know, that's all I can tell you. Fair enough. All right, one last victim here. Hello? All right, looks like that's all, guys. I will now be answering your questions. What questions do you have for me? Hope you guys learned something. That's God's water you're drinking. Well, the fun fact is that water, the water you drink today has always been around on earth. It's, it's been recycled for billions of years. The water you drink today was actually water that was around during the dinosaur times. Perhaps some dinosaurs peed it out and now you're drinking it. Obviously it's been filtered since then, but what do you think happens when you die? I think when you die, you rot. Your body decomposes. The bacteria, the worms that once were in your body, eat away at the rest of your flesh until you turn to crisp nothingness. Dirt. And then you are recycled back into the ground and are being fed to other worms in the future. You have no experience, no life after this. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no evidence of that. Now you might be scared about that, but I, to me, that makes things more exciting because now all we have is this life and we have, we should cherish it more because of that. We, we, we love, I love life so much because all we get is this one experience. It's so precious. It's so finite, right? And it makes it so much more amazing. How does gravity bend light? <clears throat> Space and time can warp. It can bend. It can be manipulated so light just as we are are we are moving through the universe through space time we are being dragged along with it light is doing the same thing so when when there are curvatures within space light just is following the trajectory of space that's being warped gravity is is the warpage of space time influenced by mass things with mass can also warp time space time and that's what causes gravity. If you were in the middle of a black hole, would we know? We technically wouldn't know, right? If you were to go into a black hole, you wouldn't tell that you couldn't tell the difference between 
you would see darkness all around you. You wouldn't see light. You would see a tiny tunnel up there, but things would be moving faster out there than, than where you are in the black hole. Time would be moving slower for you relative to, to the outside world, but you wouldn't notice anything if you survived. Now, you wouldn't survive a black hole. You'd die from various ways. How long have you been vegan? Six years. If someone looked at Earth from another galaxy, would they see dinosaurs? Um, well, no. Uh, they practically wouldn't. But yes, if you had a particular telescope that could see that closely, which is not really possible, as far as you can see, and you need a big ass telescope to do that. Um, it's in theory possible that you could, yes, but you have to be about 60 million light years away. Free will? I don't believe in free will. Can space-time tear? Yeah, we think it can. People think it can. It wouldn't be time travel because nobody's moving through time. It's just light that you're seeing. It's just old light. Why is origin of life so difficult? Good question. The reason why the origin of life is so hard is because there's so many different various ways that could have happened. There's so many different intricate processes that had to happen in specific ways. And there's different stages of life. There are different stages of chemical evolution. Heating, drying, you know, wetting, dousing, all these things had to occur in certain stages and time periods. And that's why the puzzle is hard to determine. But we're getting lots of knowledge about it. We're, we're learning a lot about chemistry. And we have a pretty solid idea as to how life began. Hair looks good. I know. I like it. I like the hair. I like it. Why does Jesus show himself on toast? <laughs> You're seeing through time, though, in a sense. It's not time travel. Why do I believe in determinism? Because every cause has an effect. Every effect has a cause. So just like me moving my hand has a cause, my thoughts were caused by something in the brain that I didn't control, right? So everything's determined by physical processes, which we don't control. We know how it began, but not why. Why must there be a why? Maybe there isn't a why. Maybe we just are. Maybe things just exist and there is no why we're here. Maybe that question is invalid. You know, why, if God is here, why is God here? It, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a redundant question.